They're all sound of H Town 97 the boss. Keisha Nicole got a special guest on the show. Feeling really inspired by this guy. I have to say this um about you. <laughs> I started following you on Instagram. Actually, somebody posted something that you had put up. I was like, yo, this is good. So I ended up following you. But every single day, I can go to your page for some words of inspiration. You always got on your story like clockwork every day. Kayvon Webster from the Texans. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Super Bowl champ. <laughs> Super Bowl add that champ there. previously. Super Bowl um, champ. You know. just released a, a book. Um, and it's for the kids, man. You're doing something really, really special for these kids. Uh, can you tell me about the book a little bit? Well, so the book is a motivational book. Um, I created it uh, from an uh, Instagram video that I had with my partner, John. Mm-hmm. So we got a lot of hits on the video, and we decided to turn it into a book. So it's, mo- it's more so a motivational to help you get through your rough time that you're going through in life. So I created it when I tore my uh, Achilles. It just gave me more motivation to keep going, and, you know, I just thought of others when I was going through my time, and we created the book. And it's a dictionary for kids? Yeah, it's a dictionary for whoever wants to read it. Mm. Um, I said kids because they're the ones who need the most guidance. You know, mm-hmm. they're our future, so, you know, mm-hmm. you want to uplift the future if you can. Yeah, where did this come from? How? What, what kind of background did you have? What kind of upbringing did you have? So if listeners that's not, that, that's not familiar with me, I'm from Miami, Florida, from Bunch Park, Opelika. Um, I grew up with my grandmother, um, her three daughters, um, five si- uh, four siblings, um, five cousins. We all grew up in one house. Um, my my mom was married, but my dad, uh, my birth dad wasn't around. Um, my brothers, my brother's dad was around, but it's it's different mm-hmm. uh, growing up with somebody else's when dad. When it's not your dad, yeah. But you know, I still call him my dad yeah. because he was there. You know, it was it was rough. You know. Dealing with somebody else after knowing that you don't that he's not your dad. So Did you uh, find that, that out like later on or uh, did you know? When I was seven years old, I took a paternity test with with my mom. Well, she came and got me from school. We went, took a paternity test with my dad. Um I I was kind of aware of what was going on. And uh to this day, uh we just had a conversation, me, my birth dad and my mom. He apologized for not being in my life uh, oh, that's big. for all these years. I mean, you know, I forgave him. You know, I'm, you know, I, it made me who I am mm-hmm. by him being absent. Mm-hmm. My mom was real strong. She always, she was my best friend. Well, she still is my best friend. She always was uh, motivating and working hard. So n- that's what got me here to where I am at today. Mm-hmm. I think it's so dope, though, because a lot of kids don't get exposed to um, books like that. You know, we get taught different things and like we get taught to go to school every day. And, you know, but we don't get those books of inspiration as a kid to where we can even understand it. So that's super, super dope that you released it. Well, I, I think uh, you don't get a lot of books with black faces on mm. like growing up. So like it's it's probably great to see somebody of yours uh same color mm-hmm. on the front of a book and it makes you feel great about yourself because somebody just like you made it from a hard place just like others going through mm-hmm. i think that's so awesome um we were talking about earlier how and it's crazy because a lot of black households are like this where it's like you stay in the same house as everybody like your cousins like but i i have the best childhood in the world because of that like sometimes people be like dang you guys all lived in the house and it was like the same thing like my granny had her house she had three rooms and then the den we turned into like right. where a bunch of bunk beds were and we all but i had the best childhood ever and to me i mean i got cousins but now i have like they're, they're like my brothers and sisters like I, I don't even you know say they're my cousins they're my brothers and sisters as we grew up together i would i would say uh my childhood was it was interesting Mm -hmm. um you know you would think that all these people in the house you would have a lot but you know growing up in a black family a lot of people are not financially literate Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't know uh, how to save they don't know what to do your parents don't teach you that because they didn't know they don't teach us that you know you kind of like growing up as a black man you kind of learn things on the fly because it's people before you they still probably have never learned that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, my grandma's house was fun. You know, when it would rain outside, you know, we would make our fortresses <laughs> in the house with my cousins. Um, it just was, it was great. It was yeah. a fun time living with her, yeah. you know, but it also it also created that drive into me like, man, I got to get out of here. I got to get some stuff on my own. I don't want to be crowded because picture yourself like 11, 12 years old. You coming home, you want to take a shower right away. 
and you got to wait in the line uh-huh. to take a shower. Sometimes you don't take a shower till 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Then you got to share the living room TVs. Not that many TVs in the yeah. house. So, uh, you know, it kind of made me uh, who I am. Mm-hmm. And I'm just thankful to be here. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Well, I got you here. We got to talk this Super Bowl, man, because Super Bowl is this weekend, and you've obviously played in two Super Bowl games. You won one with the Denver Broncos. Right. Going into Super Bowl uh, this week in the Rams versus Patriots, what is that week of preparation like for uh, for football players? Oh, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's like studying for that final exam. Mm-hmm. Um, you got two weeks to get ready for one game. So everything is critical. Every piece of information is critical. Um, we go into a classroom. We study plays that the team is going to run on certain downs. And, you know, on Sunday you get a chance to execute in front of the whole world. You know, everybody's throwing Super Bowl parties, so you want to make one play. So somebody at a Super Bowl party somewhere says your name. Yeah. Or like, hey, I know him. You yeah. know, that's what I was thinking when I was <laughs> when I was going to the Super Bowl. I was mm-hmm. like, man, I just need to make one play. You know, my parents are going to be at a Super Bowl party, my friends, uh-huh. my, you know, cousins. Family, I, I family, period. So I just gotta make, yeah. I gotta make one play, mm-hmm. maybe the first play, mm-hmm. if I can, just to make them proud. You mm-hmm. know, saying that, hey, that's my relative on right. TV making right. this play in the Super Bowl, which is the biggest game in the, in the yeah. football. So who you got this weekend? I got the Rams. I'm you going got the Rams. Why, why do people? Because I keep hearing that the Patriots are the underdog going into this game, but like to me, the Patriots aren't the other underdog. They've won so many times. Um, you got Tom Brady. Like, I mean, every single – it seems like every single year he just shows up. How is that the underdog team? I think everybody's just going with Tom Brady is getting older. You know, I think this is like 19th year in mm-hmm. football. So, I think, you know, that's why they're saying he is the underdog. He mm-hmm. hasn't played to what he's usually played to. But I think he actually has gotten better each year, you know, and and it shows in, in the results. Like, mm-hmm. he's back in the game – in the Super Bowl for his ninth time. So I, I wouldn't say it's a a decrease or him being an underdog, but mm-hmm. if they want him to be the underdog, sh- you got to ride with the underdogs. But I'm riding with Wade, Coach Wade. No. <laughs> so no. you got the Rams winning yeah. this weekend. Okay, Bob Webster, uh, go ahead and give your information on how they can get your book. So you can get my book from k web with 2 bscom mm-hmm. um, You also could follow the Instagram page, Kayvon Webster's Dictionary, and you also could follow my personal Instagram, Kayvon, K-A-Y-V-O-N. You know what? If you're listening out there, support this young man. I know a lot of times people don't figure out what they're supposed to be doing, what their purpose is, but he's somebody that's giving back. Spends a lot of times with kids. I saw you uh, do something with Microsoft the other day on your Instagram with some kids right. and like a computer with computers. This is somebody young and, and just doing something um, good in our community So and, and everybody's community. So make sure you go ahead and buy this book, support it, and buy it for you, not just you, your kids too. Right. The, the Microsoft thing... That was that was pretty cool. You know, they worked out a partnership with me, mm-hmm. and they brought me in to help kids. They have a program going on called Make Your Side Hustle Happen. Ooh. So they actually they're educating kids on having a different hustle than, you know, actually playing a sport or being, being a, a doctor or yeah. a rapper. You know, they actually making the entrepreneurship available to them um, at a wow. young age. So I went in. I, I, I currently... I just uh, closed on a, a food truck that I had in Los Angeles called Vibe 305. We're looking to move to uh, Miami mm-hmm. at the current moment and Wynwood somewhere. But when I went to Microsoft, I brought the PowerPoint that I had with my business plan for Vibe 305, and I was showing them to the kids. And that's what they kind of had to do. It's kind of like Shark Tank. They had mm-hmm. to make up a business plan and show it to me and, and ask me if I would buy their oh, business. Wow. So, you know, that was pretty dope because nobody yeah. never did nothing like that for, for me when yeah. I was growing up. I never really seen nobody else come out with a book or even try to help educate us growing up yeah. with numbers or, or anything. You know, we just had to rely on school and, and that, our own and, experiences. And yeah, or what your parents taught you at home. And a lot of times they were working, so it was hard to get something from them at all times. Right. A lot of stuff that we learn um, being of our skin color mm-hmm. is, is basically on our own because mm-hmm. the people before us, you know, I don't know why it's like that. They don't show us, you know, because they, they don't know. know. They yeah, don't know. Like, so. like my mom didn't teach me. And this is no, not a diss to my mom. My mom was an amazing mother. She didn't teach me about credit. I didn't know anything about credit. Right. I didn't know anything about paying my bills on time. I, it was something I had to learn on my own. Um, 
by just making a bunch of mistakes, you know? Right, right, right. But they didn't teach us because they didn't know. And I think now we are exposed to so much. Um, and I think kids of this generation now, even more so, even see on Instagram and stuff how you have these young entrepreneurs now, right. I think it's super dope. But we didn't get that a lot when we it's were. A, it's a new time right mm-hmm. now, though. You know, the internet has, ev- everything is evolving mm-hmm. and uh, it's going to continue to evolve. So, you know, why can't we evolve as people and, yeah. you know, just lead the, f- the future in the right direction? This is true. Um, And also, we didn't talk about your cartoon. Oh, yeah. So so I have a cartoon. We, we didn't come out with the name yet, but it's a correlation with the book. Mm-hmm. It's an educational cartoon. A uh, little bit about the, the, the cartoon is uh, I met these people in Los Angeles, uh, Stratosphere, my boy Jason. Um, I can give you a little storyline. Yeah, go ahead. So it starts off with a, a young girl. You know, she's getting bullied and at her school, mm. and um, she goes to her locker. A bunch of things fall out of her locker first day of school. You know, kids laughing at her and stuff. So she stumbles up on a board game. Uh, if you heard of Jumanji, it's like sort of like a Jumanji board, mm-hmm. but it's related. It's like a football board. So it's a foot. It's a fantasy football board. You know. Somebody pops out of the board. They talk to her about what what game she's entered, and then you know they ask her who her favorite football player is, and then here I come, I popping out. I'm she freaks out. I'm freaking out. Um, and then you know, later on you find out that she's the only person that can see me. So I'm kind of like oh, her wow. genie. Wow! Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And I'm helping her get through all the hard times that she's going through. So I'm helping her learn as she gets older. And she's helping me win in the board game because she's wow. sucking me out of real life. So we both need each other. It's teamwork. It's a, uh, it's what I've always been a part of a, a team. So you know, shout out to my team in Los Angeles. Shout out to Jason. <laughs> That's so awesome. I'm proud of you, and I, don't, I just met you today. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, thank you. Just thank a young you. black man thank doing you. positive things. Okay, once again, where can they get the book? Tell them one more time. So you can get the book from K Dash Web with two B. So K Dash W E B B dot com. You also can find the the website on Kayvon Webster's Dictionary on Instagram. And you can follow my page on Instagram as well at K-A-Y-V-O-N. Kayvon, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Thank you. Appreciate you.